Welcome, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about Softcom, which is um, a collection of solutions and technologies that will drive the future of telecom in the next 10 years. So the title of the presentation is to reshape the future way of telco industry based on OpenStack. I guess today every business is becoming a digital business. Um, customer engagement models are changing all the time. Uh, we're now looking at more customer experience centric uh, as opposed to KPI based in the past. Um, so where will things go? Operators are unsure of where things are going. Uh, so they have to hedge their bets and basically adopting an anti-fragility mo model going, moving away from stability. So essentially, uh, in the past couple of years, we've seen uh, saturated, the market has been saturated and declining. We're seeing declining ARPUs, revenues. We're seeing erosion of revenues from OTT players, uh, voice being replaced by Skype and SMS by WhatsApp and the like, various OTT applications. But we're also seeing saturation of markets, particularly in developed countries in Western Europe. So penetration levels are gone well over 100%. So there's not much more growth, except when we talk about M2M. Uh, and in the face of this, traffic is increasing, which are, which are leading to a lot more costs and capex to deal with this traffic going forward. So this model is unsustainable, and we now move into a future model. So what role can the telco play in the future model in all of these various networks we have here? Uh, it can offer virtual networks. It can offer platforms for M M2M markets. It can also partner with OTT players. It's also offering uh, services today and competing with the likes of Amazon and Google, uh, offering various things on, as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. <coughs> so then we, at the bottom left-hand corner here, we're looking at the, uh, the cost structure, the total TCO or total cost, total cost of operation, which basically is the CapEx and the OpEx. So for an operator that has built out his network, typically most of the cost is coming from OPEX. And this is in, has been increasing. As we can see here, it's not very clear, but in 2002, the OPEX constituted 77% of uh, the overall uh, TCO, and that's now moved up to uh, 82%. So this is increasing all the time, so and is unsustainable. So needless to say, Operators are now looking at ways to reduce the costs, and they're looking at technologies like NFV, et cetera. Let me move over to the, the future cost structure, which has to be more optimized, more flexible, um, and basically less cost. Uh, we need to have much more efficient network management, and we need to be offering more customer services, more personalized services, uh, and this will drive innovation. So we're looking to borrow technologies and adopt technologies from the cloud IT. Uh, we're also adopting uh, new methodologies of trying to reduce the time to market for new services and doing development and operations in parallel. We call it DevOps. And <coughs> this is a model that's been used by OTTs. So in the past, we may have it take, it's taken like a large tier one operator maybe up to one to two years to develop and roll out a new service. Now we're looking at uh, a matter of months, weeks, and even days. We even talk about uh, the capability to offer, say, a, a mobile virtual network operator in a matter of five seconds, five minutes, sorry. So that, those capabilities are now there. So here we look at <coughs> where we have been in the past 10 years and how we've moved on. Uh, so in the past, we've had uh, all these uh, legacy networks had uh, are siloed. Uh, they were not layered with a dedicated network for a dedicated purpose. And over the past 10 years, uh, TDM, ATM, SDH networks have now been all replaced by uh, IP. Everything is becoming all IP, or is all, in, in most cases, most networks are all IP today. And we also see um, a single strategy. Uh, so instead of having multiple layers and multiple boxes, we have, for example, a single RAN one, one blade server can handle all technologies, 2G, 3G, and LTE. We have a single uh, core network, single EPC, Evolve Packet Core, and everything has been simplified. Um, 
But moving forward, um, we're now adopting the technologies into the telco space from uh, IT and cloud. So we're looking at software-defined, virtualization, automation, distribution, intelligence, and so on. And this is what will reshape uh, in the next 10 years. So collectively, all these technologies we're calling SOFTCOM, which is, stands for Software Defined Telecom. So here again, we, we, we mentioned the challenges. We know what the operator response needs to be. It needs to simplify its network going forward. It needs to become more operationally efficient. And it needs to monetize new services and create new revenue in the face of declining revenues. On the right-hand side here, we see uh, there are four main pillars within Softcom. In the last presentation, I think we, we heard about SDN and NFE. SDN, Software Defined Networks, is basically uh, decoupling the control plane, which controls the traffic, from the user plane. It's an abstraction of the transport layer and basically um, allows for more programmability of the network and a more uh, optimized uh, configuration in real time so to be able to deal with massive loads of traffic <coughs> and you know there are some challenges with this technology um, one of the main challenges I guess at the moment is that it's still under standardization not all the standards are there for it yet although well, there are some initiatives like uh, open daylight uh, so this needs to move forward um, there's a lack of expertise in this area um, there's also um, it's not completely uh, uh, clear how um, operators will evolve and migrate these technologies, which, which areas they should focus on. Should it be service chaining first? Should it be the IP optical layer? <coughs> so and, uh, obviously there's a, a cost benefit of trade-off which needs to be proven. Um, then we have, uh, moving on then, uh, but of course the main driver here is to be able to have a more uh, programmable network, easier to provision, and also to be able to, to manage traffic flows better and also to be able to, uh, to monetize new services. This also gives us that capability. The second technology here we're looking at, we've mentioned in the last presentation, was uh, network function virtualization. And here we're talking about decoupling hardware and software. So, you know, in, in traditional networks today, whether it's the, you know, the, the EPC or the, the various components of, of the network, you have all of the functions are made by one vendor, all the services, everything is integrated. It's a one-box solution uh, based on ACA hardware. Now we're looking at uh, this, obviously, a way to reduce costs is to be able to use standard uh, volume-based industry commodity hardware in servers, storage, and uh, networking equipment. So th it's this basic, the main advantage, of course, with NFV, and this is gaining a lot of momentum now, probably more so than SDN, and there's a lot of uh, trials and commercialization starting in this area. Is is the is the um, cost savings, and the cost savings mainly would be in uh, the uh, the operational side of things. So you can have a more scalable, more easy pool of resources, uh, and you can buy them and mix and match them the wh whatever way you want. You don't have to buy everything from Huawei. You can buy part of it, or you can buy all from one vendor, whatever way you like. <coughs> and we're looking at virtualizing mainly, I guess. Um, uh, probably the uh, core network. We're also looking at virtualizing the IT environment that an operator would have as well. So that moves us on to the, the top right-hand box of the right-hand corner, the IT cloud. So here we're looking at the third pillar of Softcom, which is basically taking all the IT infrastructure, business support systems, the billing systems, ERP, um, you name it, just maybe 10, 15 front-end and back-end systems, and basically uh, put him into a virtual environment, a virtual data center, uh, again, to get the economies of scale, the capacity, and the scalability, and be able to scale, uh, you, you will save a lot of money. So this, this is a very obvious area um, for, uh, because it's already kind of like a data center. Um, and then the fourth pillar is, uh, what we look at is um, internet-like operations. So, and here we're looking at bringing more personalization, more services, where the user can create its own services from a web-based platform. Uh, it's becoming more like a, a Google or Amazon. It's also being able to offer new types of services. Uh, for example, traditionally today we have uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Now in the future we can offer a lot more types 
of, of, of um, variants. Um, here we have a network as a service. We can offer um, network as a service, could be an MVNO, it could be uh, VPNs. <coughs> and then we have um, as a data center as a service as well. So we move on to the next slide. So these are the four pillars of Softcom. Um, this is just some of the some of the solutions and uh, basically the hardware of a uh, data center portfolio from Huawei. And basically, uh, th this is existing. To Huawei is an IT enterprise supplier today. Provides all these different solutions for network, server, storage, and data center. But in the telco environment, we'll be using, uh, for example, we can offer the Fusion Engine, which is a carrier grade. Um, a cloud engine, and we also then have the uh, the E9000 Blade server, which is um, also used a Fusion Cube. It's also used for for the Softcom solutions. Um, yeah, this is just more details on the hardware. Uh, what what is required for the telco environment is you know we, we need things enhancements over and above what we get from the IT world. We need, uh, like for example, uh, more resilience, more availability, reliability, um, 800 millimeters depth, NEBS compliancy, something that's uh, very important. Uh, also then, the ability to support both DC and AC, uh, because if you're swapping out some many exchanges, it's uh, only support uh, DC, so you need to be able to support that as well as AC, which is tr traditionally the IT uh, type of power supply, and different sizes of equipment as well. So engagements, uh, this is for NFV. Uh, we have, we've started uh, engagements in 2012, and it's ongoing today. So we're basically, uh, these are some, some examples here uh, where we're doing virtualize, uh, virtualization of different functions. IMS sits in the service cloud, IP multimedia system, and this is one of the most popular things at the moment, primarily for delivering uh, the voice over LTE services. Uh, we're actually running into commercial trials on that at the moment. <coughs> so Cloud Edge, uh, this is something specific to the carrier world. Um, typically, the uh, the data center you're we're talking about consolidation, centralization of everything. However, for the carrier world, we need to move into a more distributed environment. We need, in some cases, we need to be closer to the subscribers, closer to the base stations to deliver the traffic. So the Cloud Edge is is designed for deployment, a uh, distributed type of deployment that's high resilience and high availability. So we get carrier grade performance without sacrificing performance. Uh, right now in this particular uh, environment we have various functions that we, we've uh, virtualizing which is the Evolve Packet Core which is the core network for LTE and multi-service engine. Uh, we have the MANO which is the uh, management and network orchestration for the virtual machines, it's part of the Etsy um, uh, definition. And here we can see uh, Fusion Sphere, which is the cloud OS that for Huawei, and on top of that sits the infrastructure. Okay. So um, this high-level uh, just overview of, let's say. Um, how this will look like. We have uh, three, let's say, layers of clouds. We have you know, the, the service cloud, which is where all the applications will be hosted. We have the operation cloud, which is taking care of uh, OSS and MANO. And we have the control cloud, which is networking, uh, the data center, and data center interconnection. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, we in the middle, we have the, the cloud edge. And on the far left-hand side, we have the cloud baseband, the cloud baseband unit. So uh, different uh, levels of cloud here. Uh, so this differs from the IT cloud because the cloud edge, for example, is, is not the end point. Traffic will, will not end there. Um, so on the right-hand side here, we have in the service cloud, we have, for example, uh, the video content delivery. Uh, we have the IMS. In the operation cloud, we have the NFV management and network orchestration and the cloud service broker. And as I mentioned before, uh, cl control cloud would be the data center SDN controller and the data center interconnection SDN controller. <laughs> In the middle then we have the, 
uh, what's called a software-defined edge. And this is where you have, let's say, the metro or the aggregation in the traditional network. Um, and we have di different components here. For example, we would have what's called a single radio uh, network controller. Um, it's funny because in, 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 uh, in LT, we got rid of the, the radio network controller, the RNC, which was part of 3G. But now we're bringing it back here because we're trying to manage traffic flows through three different types of, of, of networks, 2G, 3G, LT, maybe LTE advanced, um, but also uh, different types of cells. We have small cells, macro cells, Wi-Fi, het nets, so-called. And to manage all that, we need, we need to have the single radio controller. Um, another important area here, which we're uh, doing quite a few trials with, is, is, is service chaining. Uh, the, uh, we call it here the GI LAN uh, chaining, which is um, just behind the packet gateway. And here we're looking at um, you, you optimizing and using resources only when they are needed. So we don't need to you know, have all resources for every single session, for every single call, whatever. Uh, to give an example here, we, we, um, if you have, let's say, a, a customer who has used up his, uh, his allowance for traffic for the month and you have to throttle them back, um, then there's no point in putting in video, optimi video optimization equipment into that uh, uh, service flow. So you take that out. So basically, uh, it simplifies things. And it also is quicker to develop, uh, to launch new services as well. It's, it's actually becoming a very important feature. And here also we have um, the content delivery network can be virtualized. Uh, this can also actually be also in the service cloud. It can vary in time of day. We can move this content delivery both backwards and forwards, or if there's faults in the network, and the session border controller as well. Uh, another, another thing that's not mentioned here is um, uh, multi-service edge, and this is uh, basically like making, uh, pushing the traffic further down towards the subscriber, making the base stations more intelligent and being able to offer more personalized services. Uh, for example, you could do more um, <coughs> active device tracking location. You could do augmented reality content delivery. You can do video analytics, uh, all sorts of new services. And this is a, a new initiative that started, uh, which Huawei is backing as well. So then we have the software-defined baseband, which is um, we're now in the access part of the network. Uh, here we have a combined uh, 2G, 3G LTE all in one. We've centralized control, and we have a clustered network. So typically, before, you'd have a base station would sit on uh, one single site, and now we split up uh, the, uh, the RAU, which is the radio resource unit. This now sits on the antennas, or the mast, and then uh, the baseband unit would have been in, in a shelter, for example, but now this is all moving back to, say, to a transmission hub and being aggregated. And the only problem with this is uh, you need, really need to have fiber out to your base stations to, because of all the signaling and stuff. And finally, um, we have the software-defined radio frequency. Uh, here we're talking about multi-band, many, many different bands that need to be supported, multi-mode, multi-generation, all in one blade, and this exists today. Uh, in terms of um, migrating uh, your networks, I, uh, typically what's happening today is usually we're starting on the right-hand side, so most of the, uh, the interest and most of the, uh, say, let's say the virtualizations that are going on <coughs> are happening in the, in the service cloud on the right-hand side, but we're also having initiatives then in, 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 the, in the cloud edge. So this is the mobile broadband network, and then it's quite similar in, in the fixed broadband network. Uh, again, in, in the service cloud, we have uh, the IP policy STN controller. We have the DC interconnect STN controller. In the cloud edge, we can uh, virtualize uh, the set-top boxes, the CPEs, and the access routers. The access routers would be for for the enterprise, and we've actually, we're actually working with uh, one major tier one operator in Europe at the moment in doing um, a trial on this, and also it's looking very positive from cost savings. The, the ability to be able to 
instead of before you had to uh, manually update all the firmware, or it, it, now you can do it all centrally from the software defined edge. So you've also got the VDI, which is the virtual desktop infrastructure you can offer. Uh, again, you have the content network and the, and the border network gateway. Uh, optical and IP SDN controller. Um, this, this is um, uh, uh, basically something new where basically the, 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 the centralized controller will have a view of the network. He will know which uh, um, OTN box the routers are connected to. He will have a view of the traffic and he'll be able to create traffic engineering tunnels <laughs> to route traffic at a particular time when there's a problem in the network or there's a big demand, he can create this uh, to one particular destination by, by controlling at the same time the MPLS routers, the P, P, P and PE routers, but also the, the OTN WDM network. So it's basically um, a high level view uh, that you could not do today with today's network. <coughs> And then uh, finally you have uh, software defined access which is basically the operation and maintenance automation of the optical line terminals uh, in the case of fiber to the home or fiber and then MXU which is uh, also can be virtualized uh, for DSL. And uh, before we saw some NFV engagements, now I'm just looking at the Softcom engagements. So we have about 50 plus joint innovation projects with 20 leading operators around the world. So basically we're involved with every major operator at the moment uh, and seven of those projects are already in commercial use. Um, as most of these here would be either NFV or SDN. I think you're looking at uh, SDN, you're looking at the Transport SDN, TSDN, the SDIP RAN, the IP Core Traffic Optimization and yeah, that's it, Service Chaining. The rest are NFV, but we're also doing trials on uh, the other pillars of Softcom as well. So, bringing it back then to uh, how it looks in terms of the various stacks and how it relates to OpenStack, uh, we have uh, this is a cloud DC infrastructure. So, Fusion Sphere is the name of our cloud OS, which is based on OpenStack, and it provides uh, open extra in addition to OpenStack, we've got these APIs, uh, nor uh, northbound, and we're also, we have the standard ones then, uh, southbound. So the, the different, the add-on here again, we're talking about is a carrier en enhancement where we, uh, we're looking at much more distributed environment than the IT world. We're looking at higher availability, lower latency and, and migration. In terms of the overall portfolio uh, within uh, Huawei, I think we've got about 120 deployments of this uh, 500,000 virtual machines. So we have support for SDN e NFE initiatives and both public and private cloud services and, and data center consolidation. So what is uh, Huawei's NFV proposition? Essentially, Huawei today can do a complete end-to-end -end solution. As we saw before, we have our own hardware, we have our own cloud platform, which is developed and based on OpenStack. We have our own applications for the mobile, for the fixed. We have our own, uh, we have the virtual infrastructure, the network services, and also now we're positioning ourselves to move in as a system integrator. And we've actually got a, a, a project ongoing now at the moment for delivering a voice over LT where we're playing the role of a uh, system integrator. So essentially everything uh, we can provide if required. Again, this is another look at um, how it relates to OpenStack. Um, I'm only showing here uh, three of the main modules, uh, Nova for compute, Neutron for networking, Cinder for storage. But there's obviously about five more different modules that we're using at, at the moment. So what you see here in, in the orange color is what's been developed by, by uh, Huawei. So we do have our own hypervisor, but we, will, we can also interwork with uh, the standard hypervisors like KVM. Uh, we are develop our own uh, API extensions as well. And then we have a thing called Fusion Manager, which is managing uh, the lifecycle and user management, user authentication. 
So some of the some of the additional things we're talking about was APIs, carrier grade hypervisor, we have an SDN overlay network, and we have an ultra large storage pool for IO acceleration. Um, <coughs> these are some of the initiatives we're working with, and some of the standardization groups. Uh, obviously, we're, we've been working with the Open Networking Foundation for a while. Uh, we are a chair of the migration work group. And we're also engaging in uh, harmonizing efforts with the IETF and the Broadband Forum. Uh, in Etsy, we act. We have two major roles. We have co-chair of the working group for architecture for virtualization infrastructure. And we're also uh, acting as program manager. Uh, then, of course, on the right-hand side, we, we're a silver member of Open Daylight, which is involved with uh, promoting and developing the SDN controllers. And last but not least, we are a gold member of OpenStack. If not, I think we're uh, one of the top ten in the top ten contributors to OpenStack. Uh, this is the last slide in my presentation. It's just basically again another initiative which was mentioned in the last uh, presentation as well, where we're talking about the open platform for NFV, OP NFV. And again, we're a platinum member in that. Uh, there are about 39 members in this, and the object of this initiative is to accelerate NFV. And I guess a part of the problem is that uh, this is a very complicated, uh, um, complicated architecture. There are lots of interfaces and lots of interfaces to be defined, and what is the best way to manage and control that. So the initial focus of Open NFV, you can see there, would be in the red box, uh, basically uh, dealing with the, the virtual computing storage network the hardware and also the infrastructure management. So that's it. It's quite short. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. No questions? <laughs> Okay.